check that out. Egg group today. I'm going to be showing you how to bacon wrap a western diamondback rattlesnake. Now this is not just any old rattlesnake. A little over a month ago this one managed to bite me here in the left forearm and put me in the hospital for three days. We'll talk a little bit more about that here in a bit. For now, let's get the fire started, some coffee on, and then get to bacon wrapping this guy. Now skinning and gutting a snake is a fairly simple process. We're not going to get into the gruesome details on this video. If you are interested in that process, go ahead and check out the video link in the description down below. Simply put, we'll be flipping the snake over, cutting all the way down the belly, pulling the skin off, taking the guts out, and cleaning this meat in preparation for bacon wrapping. what a freshly skinned snake looks like. Nothing but meat and bones. Now before we get to preparing this meat any further, we'll go ahead and roll up this skin right here and make sure that we can preserve it here a little bit. Now if you're interested in how to preserve these snake skins, go ahead and check out that link in the video description down below. Now we want to make sure that we get the most out of these, that no part and piece goes to waste. Now I am not a trophy hunter uh, by any means. I don't hang up heads or anything else like that, but this snake right here, this is probably going to be an exception. Uh, this is one that was able to get me. It should be the first and last rattlesnake to ever do so. So we're going to go ahead and roll this up. Uh, we can freeze it, and then here in the next week or so, I'll go ahead and put it in solution and preserve it. That is a beautiful skin right there. Definitely worth preserving. Eight rattles on a bad looking snake. We'll put this to the side. It looks like our fire's about ready to receive some of the hardwood. This is mesquite. And we'll use some of the softer stuff to get the fire started. And then this dry mesquite heartwood. This is going to be the coals that we're going to use to cook our snake. That'll do it. our bacon. Now this is going to be a little bit different from most of your bacon wrapped creatures because the way snakes are built they've got an internal cavity all the way down them. So look at that. I've done this a few times with just onions not bacon wrapped. We're going to take these vegetables over here chop them up a little bit put them all down the internal cavity of the snake and then we're going to wrap it with bacon. The vegetables we're going to be placing inside of the body cavity of the snake, onion, we got some cloves of garlic, some serrano peppers, 
and some of the small bell peppers. And we're going to slice these thin, prepare them up, and start placing them inside. Up. I think we're ready to go ahead and stuff our snake and wrap them up to cook. Now, there's really no method to this madness. Just kind of find a spot and tuck everything inside. Depending on the size of snake you have, uh, you can put more or less in there. Now some of you might have noticed or been curious about how this snake uh, actually met its fate, how he died. And I was put in the ICU for three days with this snake bite. It's a fun story. I'll definitely have to tell it in some detail eventually. But, this snake, during my time in the hospital, at some point in that time, uh, got a hold of somebody's ire and acquired a 380 round to the side of its body. So if you noticed a bit of a hole, about halfway down the body, that's how that happened. I didn't pull the trigger, but I understand where they were coming from. So we'll make the best out of him. It makes for a pretty interesting story as well. I might have overestimated the number of vegetables, or rather the amount, that'll fit inside the snake. The bacon should give us a little bit of leeway, tucking that in there. But I'm not too wild about bell peppers anyway. So, worry not, guys. Looks good to me. I think it's bacon time. Now we're going to be using large toothpicks to keep our bacon in place. Uh, you grill guys out there, you got some better advice on this, go ahead and put that in the comment section down below. I always appreciate learning some new tricks. This is what I come up with uh, thus far. So let's see how this works.
what do you think of that? Look good? Yeah? Maybe I'll eat some. I vote probably. Take off all the spears. This is a cast iron spider skillet with a Dutch oven lid. And I'll show you what that lid's good for here in just a moment. We're gonna put our bacon wrap snake here inside of the skillet. We'll put that lid here on top and then we'll be heating it up. And that'll allow it to crisp up, bake evenly, and cook all the way through. Here it goes. This is gonna be good. Let's go get our lid on. Get our coal set up. And it's time to cook. Hot coals. You can put a little bit of heat on the bottom. The rest of this is going to go on top of that oven. Now with the Dutch oven, the trick is putting a lot more heat up on top than you do underneath it. You want that heat to radiate into the chamber and you want it to radiate down and bake what you're cooking. Turn up the heat. Coffee and snake ought to be ready about the same time. snake and this bacon's done cooking but I can already hear it sizzling down in this Dutch oven let's go ahead and take a look because watching bacon fry is everybody's pastime love that sound it's starting to smell real good too something you don't see every day
calculator's going. This copy shouldn't be too far off. For those of you that are not sure of what percolators are, what's happening is the boiling water up here is coming up through a spout. It's falling on top of this filter plate, going down through all the grounds, and making our coffee. It's a pretty nifty tool. A couple of minutes of this, coffee be done. Smells strong. Give that a few minutes to cool down. It's been about 12 minutes now since we've checked our bacon wrapped snake. It's about time to see how that's been progressing. Still hear that grease. about 10 more minutes and that ought to be ready Smell good? Okay. Yeah, sometimes it is just my cooking, guys. Okay. But to be fair, that's bacon. I don't think he's ever going to refuse that. A few more minutes on the coffee. A few more minutes on the rattlesnake. And I think we'll be eating. All right. Coffee time has come. This is the Death Wish coffee. Let's give it a try. They're not bad. That's pretty good. Let's see what it does to me. I'm gonna go ahead and push this fire up and around our skillet. Our snake's pretty much done. Go ahead and give it the, the heat of finale. Get that bacon sizzling inside that pan. It's time to see if Huck approves. guys time has come moment of truth check that out this is like mom used to cook it right this is a bacon wrapped rattlesnake get it over there get it cooled down See how it eats. Whew. That looks good. It smells good. Just about anything wrapped in bacon is going to smell that way.
fully cooked, bacon wrapped, vegetable stuffed, western dime back rattlesnake. Let's see how it tastes. Hey guys, taste testers here. He looks fairly eager for once. Let's go ahead and see if we can't cut into this snake and see how it does as a meal. And most of the time when you see rattlesnakes being eaten, you see them chopped up into segments uh, before they are cooked. Uh, most of the time, I'll go ahead and cook them whole. And what this means is usually when I'm flipping them and doing various things, I can cook them on one side with the heat, I can flip them over, and I get the continuous heat on the other side. I don't have to worry about flipping a whole bunch of small pieces and wondering if one side or the other got cooked or didn't. All right, we'll go ahead, take a piece. Try some huck. Go ahead and take a look at that meat real fast, guys, before we tear into it. And again, that's bacon wrapped inside. We have serrano peppers, garlic, onion, and a few bell peppers. The dog seems very, very interested, guys. So, piece of bacon? Want that? Okay. This is a piece of the ribs with some meat on it. Most of the times when we cook snakes, it's gonna be really tough, but this is actually falling apart. Let's go ahead and get some of the back strap off there. Let's see what Huck thinks about it. Snake, a lot of back strap all the way down. Okay. Okay. He really does not prefer snake. I'm gonna eat it. I've cooked snake in a lot of ways, in a lot of ways, in a fairly creative ways, and I've never bacon wrapped it or seen it bacon wrapped. This one, by far, this taste right here is the most pleasant snake has ever tasted. I am extremely surprised at just how, how much bacon has improved the texture the flavor it tastes like uh, pretty much pork right now just the best piece of pork you can imagine it is very strange all right all right okay everybody wants to see Huck eat food and all he's gonna agree on is that bacon is good Go ahead and show y'all some of the detail on how the meat is breaking apart. So this is a bit of back strap right here. You can pull back. But the ribs, oh man, the snake's good enough. Inside here, this is the uh, this is the vertebrae on the inside. And if you're a hunter, you know that that is tenderloin. And this snake actually has a tenderloin that goes all the way down um, and hugs the back side of the vertebrae. So pull some more back strap. That's what that is and the ribs are just coming apart and falling off the snake and it's made it really easy to pull the meat off so this is the best way other than going ahead and making a soup out of it that i have found thus far to get all that you can out of a snake let's go ahead and get some of the thicker pieces and see what we can do with that all right, take a look beautiful 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 Help with that? Okay. Mmm. All that meat. For those of you wondering about bones, kind of like trout, that is a Western Diamondback rib bone right there. Um, these would be, I guess, the smallest baby back ribs you've ever had. Right, look how easy that meat came off. I'm. I'm truly surprised at this. I'm just pulling in and it's just coming right off. Let's see the other side. This is probably the most meat I've ever gotten off of one. Hmm. 
spectacular. Awesome, awesome. Hmm. Now, guys, I'm going to eat on this for quite some time. Undoubtedly, down in the comment section, uh, people are going to claim out and cry, this is not survival. And this is not survival, guys. This is uh, kind of a full circle. Uh, the snakes, they deserve a lot of respect. If you can, uh, keep from messing with them, do so. Uh, if you have one that has to be removed, if you do have to kill a snake and dispatch a snake, use the skin, eat the snake, make sure that it doesn't have to die in vain. You can always do something with it. It's such a waste when I see all the pictures coming up on the internet of people that have just killed a snake just to kill the snake. So, make the use out of it. Learn something, try stuff out. Guys, any kind of advice you can give me on this? I think I've done a pretty good job this time. But I'm sure there's some tips in here and hacks. I don't usually cook with bacon. Though, I might have to rethink that. Otherwise, hopefully y'all have enjoyed this and learned a few things. I certainly have. But, we'll show a few more things after this. Sun's starting to go down. Dog's gonna hit me up for some more bacon. But guys, thank y'all for watching. Please like, subscribe, comment. Tell us what you think about all this. I'm gonna drink some more coffee. But as always, until next time. <laughs>
Now this might remind you of the Ready Man card that came out about uh, half a decade ago. And it does kind of look and resemble that, but there is no comparison here. This is about three to four times thicker. It's actually usable, and you don't have to make any kind of excuses for it. When it comes to survival, I'm not gonna gamble on my life or the lives of my family and friends. I'm gonna get the tool that I need. There is a right tool and a wrong tool for the job. Can I kill a deer with a rock? Probably, but given the choice between a rock and a rifle, I'm gonna choose a rifle. This is that choice right here. So go ahead and check it out. This is the prototype. Since then, I've already made some modifications, adaptations. I've improved upon this card. This is gonna be the basic makeup of it, but you'll see some more modifications after a while. We'll go ahead and put the link in the description as it comes up, as this becomes available. If you have any ideas on what you would add to this card, go ahead and shout it out in the comment section down below. We're always looking for ideas, but this is one to have. Here in a few weeks, maybe a month, I'll be doing several videos showing you the capabilities of this card. This is something I can stand behind. Day after day, week after week, I get tons and tons of emails, people trying to get me to push their product, especially the Chinese companies. You're not gonna see any of that junk on this channel, but this thing, I can definitely endorse wholeheartedly, easily. This is something worth having. Guys, I hope you check out the Grim Survival Cards. They've got some amazing products out there. They're an awesome company. Everything's made in the United States. A beautiful family. And again, everything comes out. Everything comes back in. All reusable, quality stuff. Again, something definitely worth having. Now, first and foremost, I'm going to show you my wok. You've seen glimpses of this. I'll be using this in some of the cooking videos here in the future. This was given to me by a gentleman in North Texas uh, when I was working for the Scouts of America. A uh, guy was named Bumpus, and I had taken him out on the trail for a few weeks. Absolutely amazing guy, Scoutmaster. Real thick, made out of an industrial plow disc. Went ahead and had a two horseshoe handles. Uh, three legs here. Those are put in with caps that are threaded, so these legs actually unscrew. We're going to go ahead and start off with my prized possession, and this is my walk. It's an industrial plow disc. This was made by a gentleman up in Waco, Texas, named Bumpus. He's a scoutmaster up there, or was many, many years ago. Uh, a little over a decade ago, I took a group out for a week, and he brought this to me a year later. Now, I've had this thing out on the trail for years. I had actually got transported up a canyon on a mule, a four-legged mule. I've gone ahead and put some uh, large horseshoes over here for handles. The legs I added as well, and those actually screw in, so the legs are removable. An absolutely amazing tool. You'll be seeing this featured in quite a few more cooking videos over the course of the next year, year and a half. All right, here are these tongs. This is a fairly new addition to my cook stand. This is made by Apocalypse Tongs. I'll go ahead and put a link in the description down below. Very useful. Talk about exactly why they're so useful. Industrial, uh, maybe a few modifications here and there but this is how they come out of the box. Pretty awesome, they make me kind of the king of the fire. And you notice I didn't even have to use a shovel when messing with the coals. So very, very useful. This cook stand right here, you see lots and lots of variations, a lot of twisted metal. This is just a simple one that's been welded together. You've got all your S hooks, different levels, different sizes, allow you to kind of master the heat depending on what size your fire is, how many coals you have. You can do a lot. It really makes it easy to cook over a fire with this setup. Now the cups, these are aluminum cups, probably off of eBay, maybe off of a junk store. It says made in Italy underneath them. Just custom little aluminum cups from 30, 40, 50 years ago. Pretty awesome finds. Now this uh, coffee kettle right here might look like the ones from Walmart, but it is not. It's just a little bit different. Now most of the coffee kettles that look like this with the metal and enamel over them, have a rolled edge. Okay, and that means that the metal's been rolled over and there's two different pieces of metal that make up the sides and the bottom. This, all one piece, rolls into itself. I got this one because those other ones don't last very long. One of the ways in West Texas I was able to find the old cowboy camps is that you would find a pile of kettles that had the rolled metal edge on them, just a pile of them, all broken, burned through, and what that meant was that uh, at some point, 40, 50, 60, 70 years ago, 
some cowboy having his coffee that morning had a bad day as a hole sprung through it and they lost all their coffee. So this should be holding up. I've been using it for about two years now. Looks like it's doing pretty well so far. Well, pretty cool addition. Over here, the butcher block that we use to cut up the vegetables. Nothing special about that. It's just a big piece of wood that we've cut to be used as a cutting board. Now this canteen right here, this is a two liter made by Palco. This hadn't been used or hadn't been made in about 50 years now. Very durable, as you see, we're still using them. Still a few of those available out there at eBay, I believe. Now last but not least, coming over here, you have my spider skillet with a Dutch oven lid. And this is kind of the prized possession. I came across this about five years ago. I've got a Dutch oven lid here on top. This allows me to put coals on top, radiating heat down through this skillet. Allows me to bake and toast anything I put inside of here. Now this thing has a skillet handle, but strangely, it has the Dutch oven legs on it. So it's a bit of a hybrid. This was made about, I don't know, 1800s, late 1800s. And they have not been making these things since. Not that I found. So I'm pretty proud of it. Pretty awesome deal. We'll be using this for quite a few different things cooking over the course of the next couple years. So, Well guys, that's my camp. If you all have any suggestions or questions about what you've seen here, go ahead and shoot them in the comment section down below. I'll answer what I can. Otherwise, y'all take care. And until next time.